Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Abruzzini. At first, I really would like to thank all of you for accepting the invitation uh, from the Commission to discuss this very important subject. I would like to thank my uh, dear colleague and friend, Vice President Tajani, for coming up uh, with this uh, great idea, because I think that uh, business-friendly administration, professional and transparent administration is, is really topic <coughs> of the day. I just came from Vilnius, uh, where I was discussing uh, very similar issues with the representatives of the national and the European parliament. Uh, and I think that uh, the topic there and here are very much overlapping. How we can um, uh, contribute more to getting the Europe out of the crisis, how we can create better conducive environment uh, for our economy, for our businesses to strive better and to create, uh, uh, to create positive growth and the new jobs. In the Commission, uh, besides the institutional side of my portfolio, meaning that I'm uh, responsible for the relationship with the Council, with the Member States, uh, I'm also responsible for the relationship with the National Parliament, European Parliament, but I have very important uh, uh, other part of my portfolio, which is administration in the Commission and IT, uh, uh, IT governance. And uh, therefore, uh, it was a big pleasure for me to listen to the panelists, because there are a lot of topics which I'm sure we can continue to discuss even after uh, this conference is over. Just uh, some quick reaction on some of the topics which been, uh, which been raised. Of course, if it comes to the public administration, uh, it's uh, the rightful right of our citizens to expect uh, the good professional administration. It's even in the treaty. But we know that sometimes uh, it's not that easy to deliver this uh, required service. If it comes to the European level, what we have to be uh, doing here in very professional and competent way is how we can actually help the businesses and the citizens to use what what EU brings uh, uh, to the European table, how we can use better the single market, how we can actually create the conditions that the businesses would be striving on this uh, uh, biggest uh, common market uh, in the world. And we have to do it in rather adverse environment, where everybody expects, and as it was highlighted here in the panel, that the public administrations do more with the less, because we have seen the cuts not only in the national administrations, but also in the EU administration, and I will come to this in, in a moment. So how we can actually do it? I think that uh, uh, in the morning, several of the speakers have been uh, uh, relating to the possibilities of using modern technologies. I think that uh, Mr. Alamai's uh, uh, examples are a very good one. We just simply have to do this uh, uh, leap forward to the modern technology and to embracing uh, the new technology for the uh, better execution, power, and Im improvement of the capacity of the public administrations. But I can tell you from my personal experience that I know how difficult it is. Why? Because the public administration has been for years and years and years built in the same way. Each member state has a different style of, uh, of national, regional, or local governments. Uh, and uh, they've been, of course, trained for uh, most of the lives uh, of the uh, civil servants in a different way. Now the internet arrived and we want the complete change. We want to use these modern technologies. Uh, the businesses want to use the modern technology. Young generations wants to communicate with their representatives through the social media, on social platforms, and through the modern technologies. So it's quite clear that this is way to go. But my experience is that if you just use the classical business cycles, if you use the old type of, uh, let's say, approval processes, and you just put the IT on it, you are actually complicating the life to yourself and to everybody else. Because you do the same what you would do on the paper, but with using the computers with uh, what is especially difficult for those civil servants who are not properly trained for it. So what you have to do, you have, you have to come with a completely new thinking. You have to reinvent the business cycle. You have to simplify it. You have to change it. And very often, you have to change all the laws coming coming with it. And this is, of course, the, the challenge which all public administrations uh, have to undergo. President Barroso this morning was speaking about the importance of modernization of public administration. We consider this uh, as uh, such an important element that we even included it among our top five priorities, about top five challenges uh, we see the European economy is facing. Because we have, of course, 
very good experiences with the administration in the member states, but we have also very poor experiences with the public administration in the member states, and we know how uh, less efficient public administrations can actually slow the whole economic process in, in one member state, and because we are so interdependent and linked even in the whole European Union. So therefore, we, we see it as a very important uh, topic to discuss and to have this collective uh, peer pressure on all our national governments to learn from the best and to improve the quality, competence and capacity of uh, public uh, administrations. There was a lot of said already about the e-government. I'm big supporters, big supporter of the e-government, exactly because of most of the things Mr. Alamay mentioned. No queues, nor, uh, nor, nor waiting for the service uh, to be delivered, uh, possibilities of having uh, transparent transactions, possibilities to create uh, open data which could uh, serve as a platform for completely new app industry, uh, which is uh, developing so far, unfortunately, mostly in the States and less uh, in, uh, in the European Union. And it pushes also the administrations to get modern, to modernize, to retrain the civil servants, uh, to attract young people to work for uh, public administration. And I think this is very important uh, for the future. What is the usual problem we are facing? And again, it was uh, referred to by several speakers. This is interoperability. How we can make sure that the systems within the one country are talking to each other, that they are compatible? And how we can ensure that we would have it on the European level? And I think this is one big challenge upon which we are working and where we would need also the input for all of you, how we can make it better uh, for the future. Because what we are looking here is what I would describe the concept of services at your fingertips, that you can actually get most or, if, if possible, all of what you need from public administration through your computer, through your, uh, through your internet connection. And this, I think, should be our benchmark and our goal uh, for, the, uh, for the future. I was just looking uh, uh, what would be the best example to, to give you. I will start with one which intrigued me also because of the name. It's called e Bourgogne. I mean, at first, of course, I thought that this would be a good red wine I'm talking about, but no. I mean, this is actually uh, a very innovative uh, uh, concept uh, of the French, uh, French regional uh, platform, which are using shared collaboration um, uh, services and which are uh, actually introduced the system, which is very much appreciated by everybody who is uh, using it in this, uh, uh, in this region. What are the lessons learned from uh, implementation and, and uh, usage of uh, this platform? Just for accounting processes and control of legality, the savings are over 13 million euros from the, for the French state, but more importantly, 20 million euros for the municipalities. And the savings resulted by pulling the resources and equipment are estimated over 40 million euros. And this is just introduction on, of one well thought, well implemented platform tool which state businesses and regional government can use. And Mr. Alemai was, uh, was referring to electronic invo invoicing. They have excellent results and uh, good experience in Estonia, and I know how appreciative about the systems are in Denmark. Because again, through the compulsory e invoicing which was introduced in Denmark, they managed to reduce the administrative cost by 80%, which is, by the way, 120 to 150 million euros per year. And these are exactly the money you can then use to modernize the public administration or to use money for the other uh, purposes. And the something similar uh, is what we do here in the Commission. We introduce the e-prior system, which is uh, also uh, uh, requiring the e-invoicing, and uh, we are very pleased with the results. And uh, what I'm announcing here is a little bit of advertisement. We are ready to give it to you all who want it for free. The Belgian government is interested in it. We developed the system. We think that uh, it would uh, greatly enhance uh, the competitiveness. It would greatly uh, simplify and uh, make the transactions uh, much more transparent. And for the Belgian government only, the estimation is that on a yearly basis, they can save like 2 million, uh, uh, 2 million euros uh, for suppliers and 7.5 million euros for the public. So this is something which is here, it's developed. I think we just would need to use it better. 
One system which is extremely important for all of you, and I believe for all the panelists who are, uh, uh, who are uh, on the podium here with me, because this is something what the businessmen are um, requiring almost on the daily basis. This is the information verification of, uh, the, of, of the data, validity of, uh, of the documents, especially if you are uh, making uh, the, the business on the internal market. The internal market developed its own information system which can do this for all businesses in uh, the uh, European Union. And uh, uh, the success of the system uh, became quite big, especially over the uh, last years, because this year we have seen that 34% uh, of the increase uh, of uh, requests coming from different businesses in the European Union. And uh, we improved uh, our uh, transactions in a way that uh, we are uh, able to answer most of these requests within one day. So this is again something where uh, we can uh, clearly demonstrate how the European level with national level with the businesses can, can offer very good services uh, for, the, for the future. And I think this also speaks a lot about the lowering of the transaction cost, which was referred to by Mr. Alemai. Coming back uh, to the, uh, for uh, one last sentence on interoperability, because I think we all agree how important it is. The European Commission is, is investing a lot of efforts and also money in the development of ISA platform. This is, uh, this is interoperability uh, solution for European public administration platform, which wants to achieve exactly uh, that, that if you are using certain e-government platforms in one country, you can use the same comfort and use the same uh, uh, system for request in another country. And we also would like to do it that it would be possible to do it in your language and get the answer from other country in their language and it should be translated automatically. This is a big project which we are working on and I just hope that uh, the businesses but also IT community would help us to develop it because we see it as a very important uh, issue for the future. If you allow me to uh, conclude on doing more with the less because uh, several speakers been uh, referring to that they want not only competent administrations, they want leaner administrations. Here again, uh, we are reacting uh, uh, to these pressures. We are cutting the staff of the European Commission by 5% till until 2020. We will save, uh, thanks to the both reform, one done by my predecessor, one which uh, was launched by me, uh, 10.5 billion euros, and we still uh, are going to provide you, I believe, highly qualified services. How? Because European civil servants, we simply would work by 7% more for the same salary. And uh, I hope that this would be appreciated by the businessmen because it was not always the case in the discussions which I have uh, with, uh, with, some of the, uh, with some of the government. Speaking about the transparency which uh, we see is a very important uh, high quality feature of the administration. With the European Parliament, we had uh, rather a rather long uh, uh, debate which led to the uh, Berlinger report, for which I am very thankful, how to improve, uh, uh, simplify, and put under one roof EU administrative law. As you can imagine, this is not, uh, this is not easy task because we want to avoid the threat of oversimplification or overcomplication of the European law. But what we know we are going to do, and we are going to do it very soon, is to put all administrative procedures, all the delays for the citizens, for the businesses on one website, when you could see it uh, on our transparency portals, what are your rights, what are your delays, uh, and uh, how you should be treated by EU administration, and uh, what are the best practices in the European Union, in the European Union uh, as such. We would continue to work on the revision of our transparency register, 
so everybody, all citizens would know uh, how uh, the decision process is shaped, who is participating in, in this debate, uh, what uh, the uh, lobbyist uh, companies are doing, how the NGOs are involved, what uh, the research institutes are contributing to our debate, who is supporting them, by what means, and what are the uh, key interest areas uh, of these businesses, because we believe that this also help uh, to the transparency of the decision-making process. A lot was said by Refit. I just would react to uh, the remark of uh, Messi Armand. I think our uh, ambition in uh, one in, one out is even higher. My preference would be to have one good European directive in and 28 national laws out. And I can go even farther just to use the example of uh, my colleague Sim Kalas when he was introducing railway package. He was telling us that if it comes to the railway sector, there is something like 11,000 different legal acts valid across the European Union. Wouldn't it be nice to replace it by one railway package by the professional agency who can, uh, which could do most of the transaction for this whole sector? I know this, that businesses want it very much. So help us to convince the, the national governments and the European Parliament to get it through. Because in this way, I believe we can do much more than one in and uh, one out. And uh, I very much uh, appreciate uh, uh, the remark of Mr. McAfee concerning the gold plating. If you are speaking about reducing administrative burden, I think we have to be very fair to all of us. What the Com European Commission has done, how much is it uh, still as a proposals for the reducing of administrative uh, burden lying on the table of European Council, on the European Parliament, and how much of these measures which have been already passed are not implementing in the member states? And you would be very much surprised about the rate. And uh, because we adopted this uh, uh, new approach of fighting red tape, cutting it down, we are deadly serious about it. We will be working very hard uh, to inform all of you what are the scoreboards, what which country is actually doing in that level, who is guilty for not having these uh, 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 administrative uh, cutting measures in place and how we can do it better. So this would be the new feature of the legislating work uh, in uh, the European Union because we just do not want uh, uh, to focus only on the deregulation. We want uh, uh, to legislate better, smarter, and to be sure that not only on the EU level we have this appropriate approach, but it really transcends down and it's actually implementing on the national level where the citizens and businesses uh, uh, businesses feel it most. So, to conclude, I uh, would like to reassure also Mr. Schleyer that uh, if it comes to the uh, construction sector, what I cannot promise him that there will be a commissioner for the construction sector, it would be the question for the next president of the commission, but what I can, uh, and I'm sure that after that there will be car industry, steel industry, and many other industries would like to have their own commissioners. But what I can, what I can, what I can promise him is that we are uh, doing our utmost and we continue to fight silo mentality. That it would be not one department legislating without talking to another department. That we have to introduce much more task forces to have uh, uh, the complex uh, approach and to look at it from the all angles. I would say uh, to the uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ehingen on uh, the small and medium-sized businesses, and here I think we have to thank uh, Antonio Tajani, who is, I think, the biggest defender of the SMEs, who introduced uh, the principle "Think Small First," who introduced the approach of the uh, top 10 most uh, detrimental or difficult legislation to apply for small businesses, and we are getting rid of them. We are trying to make the life of SMEs easier because we know that they are generating most of the uh, growth, they are employing most of the people in the European Union, and we have to create appropriate conditions for them. So what I want to, task, uh, what I want to uh, say in a conclusion is that I think we would need more of the meetings like this to listen to you, but also to tell you our story, because uh, this would definitely definitely help us to find a better solution for the future, for our uh, businesses, for economy in Europe, and especially for our citizens. Thank you very much, Mr. Abruzzini.